What's going on, everyone? Happy Tuesday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Tuesday edition of the Pandemic Update for Tuesday, December 12th, 2023. First off, if you're new to my channel, Welcome to my channel. We have been gaining some subscribers lately, and thank you for subscribing to the channel. If you haven't done so yet, subscribe down below. And if you learn anything at the end of this video, of course, give us a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. All right, first off, we're going to do a couple news items. Then we're going to run through some data. And then for those who have been following my daily videos for a while, you know today was my first injection of Exolair. So I will tell you how that went at the end of the video. First, let's get through some stuff to try and keep you safe. Long COVID cases will likely increase with each new wave. This is coming from ABC News. But no, not ABC News here in the United States. If you look, uh, you probably can't see it. But in the address bar, this is the Australian version of ABC. So this is Australia's ABC News. And they're saying, so why are we closing clinics? That's true. There's a lot of things closing in regards to COVID. But as you might imagine, it's all around money. Anytime something's closing, it's either they feel it's not needed anymore or it's money. In this case, they're actually calling for, and if we go down here, it says, and an ABC investigation has found of 23 long COVID clinics, at least five have closed. I'm not certain if that's in Australia or here in the United States because they do talk to a doctor in Chicago. The point is there's less long COVID uh, clinics. And then we come down here, it says the Royal Australian College of Physicians, so maybe this is Australia, is calling for an urgent reinvestment in clinics amid the current COVID wave. And that's not just for Australia. This should be something that happens all around the world. With each wave, somewhere between 20 to 25 percent, maybe even 30 percent, will go on to have long COVID issues. And each wave, <laughs> if we're doing a million cases a day right now, that's a lot of new people that are going to have long COVID problems. And that continues to escalate and build after each wave. So it's only a matter of time if these waves continue. Everyone at some point is going to have some sort of an issue, whether it be mild or something serious. Look at me. Yes, the breathing issues. That's a post-COVID issue. All right, moving on now to this. New COVID hospitalizations numbers increase 16.9% in Montana. So Montana's COVID hospitalizations, they are rising. Continuing on now with this, MRI reveals lasting brain changes in post-COVID patients. So remember, we were just talking about long COVID clinics. Here's another reason right here that, hey, we need more long COVID clinics. Trust me, if um, people post-COVID started having problems with saying, you know what? Hmm, you know, I just had COVID. Maybe that's what my problem is. Maybe I should get it checked out. If they had the long COVID clinics to do it, trust me, the people would come. You open it up in, say, I live in Philadelphia. You open up more clinics, trust me, you're going to get people because there's a lot of people getting infected right now. And many of them, say, now being December 12th, uh, come first and second week in January, are still going to have lingering issues that need to be checked out. And what better way to do it by opening up more long COVID clinics? It needs to get done. Moving on now, let's take a look at air quality for today. Air quality for today, you're going to see a mixed picture of things. It's still bad on the West Coast, and then we still have these isolated pockets in the East where it's still bad. But in between, not too bad. Taking a look here at the Walgreens COVID positivity tracker, and we're just going to look at the national level for today. And we can see the national level is 29.3%. That's up 0.5%. The prior week is 28.8%. Total test, 17,878. The prior week is 18,231. All right, someone posted a question on a tweet I did earlier. Does anyone know what happened, or can I check why Texas is not doing wastewater? Well, I don't know what the deal was with their Texas dashboard, but we can go third party and take a look at wastewater scan. So why don't we take a look at a couple sites here in Texas today? And here's Sunnyvale, Texas. You can see here, it is low for COVID, but the overall trajectory is rising. 
RSV is high at this time. And wow, most recent update is straight up. Influenza A and B, not too much of an issue right now. Norovirus is medium and dropping ever so slightly. No Mpox. I don't think Mpox is listed here, is it? Uh, no, there it is. Mpox, not an issue right now. Hepatitis A was an issue. Most recent update, no. And we'll do one more Texas site for you. Let's come down here just north of Houston. Let's see what's going on at this site. Right here, the middle one. Woodlands. And you can see it is medium for COVID. Rising ever so slightly. RSV is high and whoa. Straight, almost straight upward for RSV. That is not good. Influenza A and B. There have been some detections of it. Norovirus is rising at this time. Hepatitis A not an issue, and Mpox is not an issue. So if you use a third-party website, and I do, when I put the description down below, I post a uh, link to a page on my website that has all the links to the stuff I use, and I'm pretty sure Wastewater Scan is included. I'll double-check. And uh, you can check this out here. You can also potentially use the CDC website, which is right here you can use this one and you can also come to this site here and i do see what you mean that yes there are a few sites from the cdc that are not updating but there are some others here where colors are showing up meaning that they are updating all right moving on now you can see here COVID is likely growing or is growing in many different states the latest uh, variant hv.1 is in the lead at this time 29.6 percent not going to last. JN.1, to be honest with you, even though we don't have an update right now, is probably already ahead of that. But on the most recent update, it's 21.4%. Wouldn't surprise me if it's probably pushing 30% in actionality right now because, remember, CDC data, when it comes in, is a few weeks behind. All right, moving on to hospital admissions the past week, 22,513. It's not good. That number continues to rise, and this is not helping that number either. Philadelphia, 825 EMS incidents yesterday. Philadelphia had a case of the classic, well, uh, maybe I'll wait till Monday. People did, and well, heck, there were a lot of calls. And when you're seeing a higher call volume with uh, the EMS, that means there's a higher number of activity going on at the hospitals. That doesn't even include all the walk-ins that include at the ER. Taking a look at Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, you can see there's not a whole lot of calls right now. It's 12, so yeah, I mean, it's over 10, but what we are seeing here is, check this out, respiratory emergency, two respiratory emergency, three respiratory emergencies, four respiratory emergencies, and a fever. I have to think maybe the viruses are coming out to play with those calls, and look at Chester County, Pennsylvania. My goodness, respiratory difficulty one, respiratory difficulty two, respiratory difficulty three, not one sick person, not two sick persons, three sick person calls right now, heart problems, strokes. See, it's like I say, sometimes it's not the volume of calls, although for Chester County, Pennsylvania, there's a lot of calls. Uh, sometimes it's the type of calls. And yes, at multiple counties, you just saw, this is two different counties, multiple people sick with breathing difficulty calls as well. Yeah, the viruses are on the rise in southeast Pennsylvania. The viruses are on the rise all across the country. But take a look at New Jersey. Hospitalizations, 688. Yeah, this is rising. They've corrected here. 70 out of 70 hospitals reporting. And it is almost, not fully, almost a continuous rise now. Taking a look at New York City, and I do have to refresh this. New York City tested positive, 1,548. That's actually slightly lower than the previous week. But now when we take a look at New York State, I, I said New York City. I'm talking about New York State overall, not just New York City, which New York City is included in these numbers, but these are statewide numbers. We take a look at the hospitalizations. This tells us a different tale. So though maybe when we go back to these numbers, yes, the number of positive cases in New York are down slightly from last week at this time. They saw another huge jump in hospitalizations. They finished last week 1,640. This week, it's 1,791. So that works out to, what is that, 151 increase. So, yeah, that's a pretty big increase in hospitalizations. And we compare that to the previous week, uh, where they ended 1,425 to 1,599. Yeah, you get the idea here. 
big increases on Tuesday still. And the Tuesday is usually the day that we see the biggest increases. You can see that, that history, it goes back to almost every wave. There's some sort of backlog from weekend data, whatever the case may be. Monday into Tuesday on the Tuesday update is always the biggest increase. And it clearly shows here, COVID is still growing in New York right now. And we can actually also take a look at New York City. And we can see here, New York City, it's growing. Long Island, it's growing. So almost the majority of New York uh, State, it's showing a growing. And wow, Long Island, it grew pretty significantly. Speaking of growth, let's take a look at this from Hub Bob World. NYC, New York City, has a very high local prevalence, up to 1,225 area. Every subway car has at least one infectious passenger. Every subway car. That's really uh, pretty significant. JN.1 variant is driving a rapid increase until the end of the month. Get your local 30-day forecast from HubBub. And you can take a look here. Take a look at this chart. You can see here it's just off the charts in New York City Metro. Even some of the uh, western and upstate New York cities are starting to see some higher transmission of COVID. So this is definitely an issue. Alrighty, taking a look at this picture. Yes, this is me. I had my very first injection of the drug Exolar today. So this was prescribed by my pulmonary doctor, because as you know, I've been having some breathing problems, uh, which really started post-COVID back in 2020. I have asthma, allergic asthma, allergy-related asthma, and it's in the moderate to severe category. It's moderate, which does put me as a good candidate for Exolar. So I went to get my uh, injections up in Ben Salem, Pennsylvania today at a place called, I believe it's called IVX. And what it is, it's basically an infusion center. They were very thorough. They answered any question I may have had. They uh, told me about all the side effects. Obviously, as you know, I mean, first time getting an injection, I'm nervous. They made me have to carry an EpiPen, as you can see here. Yes, I had to take this with me. And I do have it in the box. Luckily, I did not have to use it. And basically, I had an injection in my right arm. And I had an injection in my left arm. I think it was 150 millimeters or something like that each. And they told me all the possible side effects. So far, just a little bit more sore in my left arm than my right arm. But I'm feeling nothing in my right arm. A little sore in the left arm. She said that's because I was a little tense. And obviously, I was nervous getting an injection because when I was a kid, I had a allergic reaction to morphine. And then, of course, I have all these food allergies now that have started up where I uh, get some allergic reaction to food, you know, with a throat issue. And I actually told her about that. She says, hmm, when do you see your doctor again? I said, oh, well, next week. She says, make sure I tell him about that. It's very important that I tell him about that. So the injections went great. I waited around for 30 minutes. I thought it was going to be three hours. Waited around for like 30 to 45 minutes. Then they came back and said, nope, I can go. I'll be getting my next injection in four weeks. And yes, unfortunately, I'm going to be on this for well a very long time, potentially. She said the rest of my life, but it's assuming, in my opinion, it's going to be whatever my pulmonologist says. If he says it's working, stay on it. Well, then that's what I do. If he says, nope, try something else, well, then we'll try something else. But for the time being, I'm on Exolar. Uh, you can look it up if you want to. Uh, so far, very minimal reaction, just a soreness in that left arm and a little bit of a headache. And quite frankly, I can't even feel the soreness in the arm anymore. It's just a slight headache. So, yeah, it's going good so far. Next one's going to be in four weeks. Day before, I happen to go back to my pulmonologist, at Dash Sleep Doctor, and it's going good. Honestly, they say it's supposed to take two to four months before I start seeing results. I don't know. Do I sound better today? I feel like I'm already breathing a little bit better. Maybe I'm just jumping the gun here, but I already feel a little bit better. Already, we will have another pandemic update again tomorrow. If you like this video and you learned anything, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to my channel down below. If you know anyone who needs to see this content, share this with them. If you have anything that you want to add or say, leave a comment down below. I love reading and responding to your comments. I will see you all again next time. Until I see everyone again next time, please stay safe and have a fantastic 
Tuesday evening. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye for now.